pulmonary function is something that can be measured. Um, lung capacities, br uh, breathing capacities, tidal volumes, these are things that can be measured with a spirometer if needed. A spirometer would allow us to, um, to obtain a spirogram, which is a, a graphical representation of breathing, lung volume, and spirometry can um, it can show it can show lung volumes, but it can also give us an indication of various disorders that a person might have. Just to mention a couple of them here: asthma, right? Asthma is very very common, or at least not uncommon. And what happens in asthma is that all of the lung tissue is normal; it works correctly. Um, there's a normal vital capacity, even so, vital capacity right here, normal vital capacity. Um, however, there's a reduced forced expiration. So let's find that on the graph. Expiration, expiratory reserve volume right here. Um, so that uh, person with asthma is not able to breathe out as much air as other individuals might be able to. There can be a couple of causes for this. Inflammation of the airways. Inflammation, that means that not as much air would be able to pass through just because the opening is smaller. It can also be caused by constriction of the bronchioles. If, um, if those bronchioles constrict, then again, they get smaller and the airways are just smaller. Uh, this can be reversed. Constriction of the bronchioles can be revo reversed with a bronchodilator. So an inhaler that has albuterol um, would do just that. Another disorder that can be observed based on spirometry is emphysema. This is a type of chronic obstructive pulmonary disease and emphysema is most commonly caused by smoking and what takes place with emphysema is the alveoli are actually being destroyed over time. So fewer alveoli, that means less pressure up to, up to the bronchioles and that means that the bronchioles are more likely to collapse during expiration when we breathe out. So this can lead to inflammation and also destruction of the alveoli by our own immune cells. So this is a, a disease that progresses. Um, it's hard to get the immune cells to stop doing this once it's initiated. Um, we don't have a cure at this point and it, it can lead to death. It is a leading cause of death. Chronic obstructive pulmonary diseases are right up there on the list. The gas exchange that takes place in the lungs happens very quickly. Equilibrium is, is reached extremely fast and Henry's law, Henry's law is something that allows us to sort of quantify how much gas will go into the blood versus stay in the air. Um, it's not like all of the oxygen goes from the air into the blood, right? That, that it has to follow some, some rules. So Henry's law is what connects a few concepts together. Um, we can predict how much gas will go into the blood based on a couple of things. We need to know the solubility of the gas. We need to know the temperature of the, of the, of the blood and of the air. Um, and then we also need to know, we're gonna focus in on this one a little bit, the partial pressure of the gases. The partial pressure. So this depends on how many gases are present and it's just kind of quantifying uh, the ratios of those gases. So let's do a comparison. We're gonna compare air that is brought into the lungs with air that is down in the alveoli once gas exchange has had a chance to happen. Okay, so when we breathe air in, let's focus in on oxygen for just a moment and CO2. Okay, those are kind of like the two key gases that we are concerned with right now. So carbon dioxide is kept in very low concentrations in the air around you, right? There's not very much carbon dioxide. Plants are doing a great job of photosynthesizing. Once gas exchange takes place, Carbon dioxide concentration in the air is much higher, right? Makes sense. Carbon dioxide is diffusing from our blood into the air in the alveoli. Oxygen, on the other hand, just the opposite, right? Oxygen is initially at a pretty high concentration in the air, and then once gas exchange happens, that concentration goes lower. Makes sense. Oxygen is leaving the air and traveling into the bloodstream. Nitrogen, nitrogen, there's not really a big change. That's because it's not really a physiologically relevant gas. Um, so not a big change with that. And then water up here, it says water is variable. Why would water be variable? Well, humidity varies, right? It varies depending on um, the weather and time of year. So these partial pressures, 
These partial pressures are what help to drive the, the movement of the gases. Let's follow this pathway. Let's start in the alveoli. Okay, so we just checked out what the partial pressure of these two gases was on the previous slide. Okay, so the, um, the gas diffuses into, oxygen diffuses into the blood and carbon dioxide diffuses out. So there's this gas exchange that takes place. The blood then goes into circulation, right? Where does it go from the heart? Think back to the, the cardiovascular system. Um, the blood is going to travel back to the left atrium of the heart. So back to the heart and then into the left ventricle. From there, it gets pumped out through the aorta out into the systemic um, circuit. So it goes out to the body and delivers oxygen to all of the tissues, takes up carbon dioxide from those tissues. Okay, so traveling through an artery, we make it over to the body cells and then there's this other gas exchange that takes place. Oxygen diffuses into the cells. The cells give up their waste product, carbon dioxide. So now look at the partial pressures of these gases. We used to be at 100 for oxygen. Now we're down to 40 for oxygen. Carbon dioxide used to be at 40. Now it's come up to 46. Why wasn't there a big change with carbon dioxide? It went up a little bit, but not a whole lot. Think back to the effects of buffers. Remember, blood has a buffer in it, and that buffer helps to um, sort of absorb the carbon dioxide in a way. We'll come back to that a little bit later on in this chapter. So that blood um, is traveling through a vein now, makes its way back to the right atrium of the heart, and then down to the right ventricle of the heart, and makes its way back to the lungs and starts the whole cycle over again. So these partial pressures are what drive this gas exchange throughout this whole circuit of circulation.